I just every once in a while become concerned for the just the status and the well being of Ricky Gervais's testicles. You think a lot about those, don't you? I do, because he's it's, 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 the way he talks about them. Um, and he talks about them as if people his age all have this experientially. Some? Some probably do. I have a friend who has very saggy testicles. And he's my age. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <Aww>. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Super Direct Suits of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more juicy <laughs> content. Thanks to Patreon, fellow student account, subscribe to the button. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I don't know what that comes from. I don't know if it comes genetics. from, it's just, it, is it genetic, it's just genetics, huh? Just like, um, all vaginas are different. They all, yeah. Some are well, see, but the difference with, the difference yep. between vaginal structure is that it doesn't have the, the, Gravity doesn't have impact on it the way it does no, on testicles. They, it's like all, breasts. They're all very different. Of course. They, but uh, but for testicle sagginess, I know there's a genetic propensity for those kinds of things, but also there's a, an, a, a, are you just standing around naked a lot? Are you tying things to them that ought I, not be tied to them? I think it's mostly just uh, genetics. Because <laughs> he said, Rick Gervais claims that when he's in the bathtub, he is very they long. float to the top of the water. He, he has very large saggy testicles. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to see that. Oh, okay. Josh! Anyways, today we got a video. This is a, uh, a vlog from a channel uh, called David's Been Here. Oh. Uh, 1.08. Wow. Uh, is it David a dog? Does he mark things? Top 10 oh, places. David's been here. Tape t <laughs> top 10 places to visit in Kerala, India. I don't want to be there if David's been there. What do you got against David? Well, I just could you imagine an ex girlfriend who was a tattoo on her stomach? David's been here. <laughs> cool. I don't want to be where David's been. <laughs> do you? Does David have diseases? That's what I want to know before I go there. <laughs> here we go. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bid here in beautiful Kalika, Kerala, India. I am so happy that I traveled to this state. God's own country is amazing. I traveled for 12 beautiful days. I thought Texas was God's own country. South, all the way north of Casagot in the very northern tip. We ate lots and lots. Could he say northern food. tit? We saw tons of attractions. We saw wildlife. We wow. Went to the mountains. We went to beaches. Uh, I mean, there's so many things to do here. Twelve days is not enough. But here are my top ten places you have to visit in God's own country when you come. Up first, we have Kerala's capital and largest city, Trivandrum. The city has a humid, jungle-like climate, which is perfect for growing trees that bear bananas and coconuts, which are a staple in the local cuisine. Trivandrum was an ancient spice trading post dating back to 1000 BC, and those spices are all used to flavor the unique southern Indian food the city is known for. The city is home to one of the most prominent Hindu temples in the world, Padaman Baswami Temple which also happens to be the world's richest temple. Over $22 billion worth of gold and jewels have been unearthed at the temple, which is also a prominent pilgrimage site. Just remember that only Hindus are allowed to enter. Another prominent location you should visit in the city is the Chalai Bazaar, Kerala's busiest street market. Mm -hmm. Its lanes are lined with hundreds of vendors who sell meat, vegetables, fruit, jewelry, spices, and much more. If you want to dive into Kerala's art and history, you won't want to miss the Napier Museum and Gardens, a 19th century building that houses an wow. art gallery and archaeological finds from the area. I also recommend Kavalam Beach, which is located roughly 10 and a half miles south of the city mm. and is made up of three beaches divided by rocky outcroppings. One of the best ways to pamper yourself in India is to get a haircut and massage at a local barber shop. In Trivandrum, it doesn't get better than Mr. Barber, a small but clean shop with an expert barber who expertly trimmed my hair and beard and gave me one of the best scalp, head, and neck massages of my life. But my favorite thing about Trivandrum is the food. Oh. It's one of the ultimate foodie destinations in southern India. Oy From the flaky parotas and the rich oh. and tender beef curry at Good Morning Hotel to the oh, that looks so good. and the meaty and spicy putu curry at Edinburgh Restaurant. 
you can go wrong. Mm. I also highly recommend the multi-course banana leaf meal known as Sadai, which you can get at Mother's Veg Plaza and the we saw that in a different video at the award-winning Villa Maya restaurant. If top-notch chicken is your jam, head over to Kethos Chicken in Chalai Bazaar, which sells a super spicy chicken fry that is coated in a mouth-watering marinade. Trust me, your stomach and taste buds will thank you. Next up, we have the town of Kilimanur, which is a great day trip option located about 45 minutes drive north of Trivandrum. In Kilimanur, you'll find Basigyorakala Restaurant, a traditional spot that is known for cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls, yeah. Veg food. If you only try one thing, make it the mind blowing Good sweet grief. Drum. That Holy looks amazing. Shoot. Tasty pieces of coconut. But I also recommend the chicken liver, duck roast, fried prawns, fish fry, and chicken curry. Outside of Kilimanur is the village of Chaya Dayamanagalam. Where you'll have the opportunity I, it sounds to like he's nailing those pronunciations. It does. Hotel. The signature dish here is a traditional food called pazum kanji. It's pazum a messy, kanji. sour, and flavorful rice gruel that you can eat with fish curry, chicken curry, and fish fry. You eat everything with your you hands, had Corbin so don't and fingers. feel weird about licking your fingers afterward. That's how you show the cooks you really <laughs> liked it. The main attraction in the area Corbin is would rather have sex with the cooks than lick his fingers to show them he liked the food. They're probably very attractive cooks. Yeah a cave resort and the largest bird sculpture on earth i recommend taking now, the cable car this is the largest statue, bird sculpture on earth stands seven right feet here. tall and covers fifteen thousand wow. square feet in total if you did a lot of eating beforehand that's take massive 826 steps back down to burn oh. off some of those calories or vomit the must see place in kerala is the seaside resort town of varkala Varkala is a southern Indian paradise and one of the area's Twist. biggest tourism hotspots. You could and you could spend two weeks why. there alone. The town's main attractions is the beautiful people Varkala are in the water. Beach, a wide stretch of sand that is bordered by gorgeous red. Kind cliffs. of looks like Santa Monica On top right of there. The cliffs is the Varkala Promenade, a boardwalk that is lined with restaurants, shops, and cafes. Try the cardamom coffee at Coffee Temple Restaurant, and if you need one, get a traditional scarf to wrap around your head at any of the nearby shops. Even though Varkala is very touristy, there's also plenty of opportunities to immerse yourself in the local culture. I recommend taking a tuk-tuk from the promenade to Yudara Swami Temple, an ancient Hindu temple that is over 2,000 oh, wow. years old. The temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu, and you'll also find idols of Gurunda and Hanuman at the entrance of the inner shrine, just off the courtyard. The main point of interest for visitors is the banyan tree, which devotees hang baby dolls from if they want to be blessed with a child. One of the most traditional aspects of Kerala's culture are the temple festivals. You can experience one at several temples in the area, including Kutikatil, Badrakali, Devi Temple. For the festival, the temple is decked out in thousands of lights, and dozens of musicians march down the parade route in a beautiful chenda melam and band melam performance. The main highlight is seeing a temple elephant, which is adorned with a bright, colorful idol and represents a god. Of course, you can't visit Varkala without visiting its street food stalls. You can't go wrong with one of the fluffy and doughy tata dosas. Uh. Which pair perfectly with the That's a dosa? used chicken toram and the steamed rice flour dish called putu. There's also a delicious spicy omelet, which makes you feel like you're having breakfast and dinner in the same meal. The next place you have to visit in Kerala Ugh. is Alapi, another of southern India's most prominent tourist destinations. It's mostly a farming city, but it also serves as the gateway to the Kerala backwaters, arguably one of the most beautiful areas in oh, India. Wow. But before you set out to explore the backwaters, grab a bite to eat at Brothers Hotel in town. I recommend the fish curry, duck curry, and putu. Another great spot in the area to grab a bite is New York Toli Shop where you can have a drool-worthy southern Indian seafood feast that includes crab with gravy, stir-fried mussels with it called chili, New York? And onions, fish fry, putu, and a savory pancake called appam. But of course, the main reason to visit Alapi is to explore the Kerala backwaters, oh, an extensive network of canals, love to. lakes, rivers, and lagoons that were used by the Portuguese to transport spices back in the 16th century. No trip to the backwaters is complete without staying on a houseboat, which is essentially a floating Airbnb. They mm. range in quality and price, so be sure to do your research before booking. The price will depend on the size of the houseboat Good and the number grief. of rooms, but it will also cover the cost of all your meals, activities, and the crew. All inclusive, huh? You'll visit temples and churches along the waterways, local oh, how markets, cool. and get to see traditional to. homes oh. and paddy fields. The food is also spectacular as it's local and freshly prepared by the onboard cooks. Expect everything from fresh fruit 
and seafood to banana oh. fry and fried bread. Get this my is wife's the heart racing. Veg you've ever eaten in your life. For the next place you must visit, we're heading into the interior of Kerala to the Thekkeri area, which is located in the Iduki Thekere. district and borders the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu. Oh. There, you'll find the Periyar Tiger Reserve, a 357 square mile park in Kerala's western Ghats that's home to a wide variety of wildlife including 266 species of birds mm. and 35 species of mammals including tigers asian elephants wild boar and antelopes one of the highlights of my stay in the thekiri area is that i had the opportunity to witness the traditional cultural art form called kathakali oh nice Kalari and navarasa kathakali thekiri theater it's a form of hindu performance art and indian classical dance that combines comedy exaggerated facial expressions and elaborate costumes with myths legends and live music at the same complex you can also witness a traditional martial arts performance called kalari which is thought to be india's oldest surviving martial arts form it combines hyper athleticism sword fighting stick fighting and fire dancing as i mentioned earlier thekiri is located just a stone's throw away from tamanadu so it's only natural that you'll want to cross the border to explore the flatlands that lie at the base of the mountains along the border are home to some gorgeous great vineyards as well as street vendors who sell coconuts bananas and broth alcohol and non-alcoholic wine when you arrive back in the thickety area, be sure to try some banana chips at Kirali Chips. No, in the fresh yeah. banana chips, huh? And come in several different flavors. When you stay in Thekiri, I recommend the Wooden Thekiri. Resort, which is a comfortable modern hotel that boasts 29 spacious rooms and suites. Their on-site restaurant, Drizzle, is the perfect place to have I gave your mom some drizzle. <laughs> in the morning, have some delicious southern Indian breakfast, a creamy chicken curry. I gave your mom some creamy chicken curry. Also known as string hoppers and are made of mom <laughs> and fresh coconut. And if you're like me, you can also enjoy some incredible doses with a mouth-watering coconut chutney and a light, flavorful sambar. It was so good. For dinner at Drizzle, Isn't I recommend some bar? checking out their buffet, where you can also enjoy a phenomenal Southern Indian feast for the gods. The beef curry with chilies is nothing Oh, so oh my spicy. God. I had my tongue completely numb by the end of the meal. I, I had your mom's tongue, tongue completely numb. Incredible paneer curry and a wow. rich and flavorful butter chicken, which were some <laughs> of the best I've ever had. But by far the most incredible <laughs> thing you can experience in Thekiri is to venture into the forested mountains to prepare and enjoy mm. a meal with members of the Manam tribe. Oh, this wow. tribe has called the mountains of Kerala home for centuries and they speak a unique dialect that's actually a mix of Malayam, Kannada and Tamil. You'll <laughs> join them in preparing a traditional meal which for me included spinach with onions, roasted tapioca, local river fish, uh. chicken curry and a thick sticky paste called ragi. This is what oh, Kerala wow. is all about meeting new people, trying new foods, and exposing yourself to new cultures. It's one of my favorite experiences I had in Kerala, and I want you to experience it as well. Up next, we're heading to Munar, also known as the Kashmir of South India. Munar is a hill station that lies about 5,200 feet above sea level at the meeting place oh, of wow. the rivers. With its breathtaking scenery, Good beautiful grief. tree plantations, and stunning mountain vistas, oh, it's my no wonder stars. it's a popular honeymoon destination. I recommend checking into the Dreamcatcher Resort, which is about an hour's drive from Munar Town. The wow. rooms include four private tree houses that have their own entrances and look out over a vibrant green tea plantation. One of my favorite experiences in Munar was the traditional meal I had in the forest clearing high up in the mountains. There, I got to watch locals prepare an incredible feast of beef liver roast, mutton soup, kanthali chili prawn, a juicy mutton leg, pumpkin payasam, and lots more. Everything was out of this world, but I couldn't get enough of the masala on the mud and leg. Ooh, so good. It made my lips tingle. When you go to Munar, you have to explore Munar Town. I recommend heading into town at night so you can explore. I made your mom's lips tingle. There's a small Hindu temple and an enormous Christian church, as well as several shops where you can buy traditional clothing and headscarves. But the best thing about exploring Munar at night is the street food. There you can try my favorite Indian street food of all time. Bani Puri, which is a Maharashtrian snack made of hollow, crispy dough balls that are filled with potatoes, chutneys, and spiced water called Bani. You can also enjoy some Tamal style dosas, an amazing chili fry oh, with tapioca, my goodness. Barotas, All this food looks amazing. Don't miss the homemade chocolate at MSP and Sons, 
which sells 21 different varieties. Nice. Munar is also home to Kudukumalai Tea Plantation, the highest elevated tea plantation in the world. It's located super high in the mountains, close to a viewpoint where you can witness one of the most epic sunrises on earth. You'll have to wake up at three in the morning to see it, as you have to drive one hour to Suriyana Estate and then another 45 minutes up the mountain. From the top, wow. you'll most likely see a layer of clouds far below you. The clouds will burn off as the sun rises, but not before the sky and clouds are painted in brilliant reds, purples, orange, and golds for several minutes. It was beautiful. I bet. After you witness the sunrise, make the drive down to the plantation where you can go on a tour of the facility. Try some locally produced black and lemon tea Ooh. and enjoy breakfast of dried fish, dried and fried chilies, and a fermented rice soup with gooseberry pickles and yogurt. As we make our way north along Kerala's Arabian Sea coast, we'll reach the seventh place you must visit in Kerala, the city of Kochi. Kochi is an ancient city that was known by the I Chinese, I love how he put like Greeks, 10 things Jews, and this Arab, and <laughs> there's been like a hundred things and so it also was an important hub <laughs> during the spice trade. Its fort, Fort Kochi, was the first European colony in India. And you can still see the old Dutch and British architectural styles in its colonial homes and churches. One of those churches is St. Francis Church, which dates back to 1503 and is one of the oldest European churches in India. Another notable site in the fort is the shoreline, which is home to the world famous Chinese fishing nets, which hang over the waters and catch everything from fish to prawns to crabs. To the humans. local zoo town is another area worth exploring. <clears throat> the roads are extremely narrow, so it's a lot easier and faster to walk than to drive. The area is home to the oldest Jewish synagogue in the Commonwealth nations, as well as lots of craft vendors and textile shops. One of the more unique shops is the SPR Natural Home Fragrances, which sells incredible perfumes and colognes made from pure natural oils. You can also find lots of clothing and souvenir shops that sell statues, wood carvings, masks, brass, and copper work. The food in Kochi is next level. Whether you head out at night to enjoy a phenomenal egg dosa with tomato chutney, oh. sambar, or the earthy mud baked chicken at Midnight Chicken Restaurant, you'll be in heaven. Some of my personal favorite dishes were oh, the crunchy spicy. beef dry fry and the fresh chicken fry I tried at the street food stall in the heart of the city, as well as the succulent prawn curry I enjoyed at the Upper Berth Restaurant on the rooftop of the Coral Isle Hotel. Trust me, it will blow your taste buds away. Between the cities of Calicut and Kanur, along India's North Malabar coast is the city of Teleseri. Teleseri is formerly known as Telecheri and is yet another historical site along the Arabian Sea. The city's so most French common houses. historical attraction is the Telecheri Fort, which the East Indian Company built back in 1708 to help prevent local attacks you, against you know the how, British. You know how to tell if you're in a French bathroom? Has a lighthouse, European. Soldier barracks and secret tunnels that lead to the sea. Teleseri's other main attraction is Muzupilangar Drive-In Beach, which is roughly three miles long and packed with dense sand that wow. is stable it enough is to a drive, drive beach. In fact, it's the largest drive-in beach in Asia. It's also a popular spot where young people try <laughs> driving stunts along the water's edge. But, as always, the city's magic is in its cuisine, which is stellar. Teleseri is known for its biryani, a layered rice dish that is popular throughout India. The best place in town to try some is the Paris Hotel, where you'll try Teleseri Dum Briyani, which contains ghee rice, coriander, chicken, fried onions, raisins, and more. It's light on spices, but the dried coconut chutney and mango pickle provided on the side add a burst of tropical flavor. Another well-known restaurant in Teleseri is the Bombay Hotel, which serves some of the best string hoppers I've ever eaten. Try them with a the string hopper? egg curry, which is made up of juicy tomatoes, roasted onions, and perfectly cooked boiled egg. Mix everything up in your hands and dive in. If you need a cold drink to help you cool down after a long day in the hot Teleseri sun, check out Fido's Cool Bar, where you can get a milky frozen drink called the Cocktail. It's a cool, refreshing blend of papaya, carrots, banana, dried nuts, pomegranate seeds, dried fruit, and milk. If you're in the mood for street food snacks, you can find a bunch of masala coated french fries called chicken feet and hot milk with semolina and vermicelli noodles at stalls near Telesere Pier, which dates back to 1910. Of course, you can visit the North Malabar coast in Kerala and now visit the region's largest city, Kanur. Back in the 12th century, Kanur was an important trading post that did business with Persia and Arabia. But today, it's a beautiful port city, which means you'll find tons of fish there. If you want a wild experience in Kanur, head over to any of the city's fish markets. You can watch fish being offloaded from their boats, 
auctioned, and sold to vendors before they're butchered and purchased again by customers. You can buy all kinds of seafood there and at the harbor, including prawns, marlins, sailfish, and even stingrays. Within the Kanar district, just outside of town, is Isri Subramanya Swami Temple in the town of Payanur. It's one of the district's most sacred sites. You can only go inside if you're Hindu, but you can visit the temple's pond and feed the fish that live there. If you're into culture, the Kanar district is one of the handful of areas in Kerala where you can witness wow. the ritual known as Teyam. It's an ancient form of ritual worship that takes place in the Kulutunadu area of Kerala between November and February. Some of Thayam's traditions and customs date back to as far as the Neolithic period. Its worshippers believe the rituals give them a direct channel to God. At the other end of the religious spectrum in Kannur district is one of my personal favorite things I did in Kerala which is attend an Indian Christian wedding in the nearby city of Kasaragad. Oh yeah. There I had an amazing opportunity to watch cooks prepare massive vats of biryani, duck roast masala, chicken 65, beef roast, katunad duck curry, and more before attending the wedding and enjoying a southern Indian feast with 1,500 other guests at the reception afterward. Amazing southern Indian food is never ending in Kanur. 1,500? <laughs> tropical and flavorful chicken and egg biryani at Hotel Jaya to the drool-inducing mackerel, mussels, and fish curry at the Malatur Hotel. You can also find outstanding dishes on the street, including a polenta-like beef curry with putu, spicy mussels with tapioca, mud and liver with strips of flatbread called patel, and a meaty stir-fried beef dish called beef chili. You can also enjoy an incredible feast of delicious mussels and southern Indian seafood at the beautiful Seashell Harris Beach Home and take a day trip to the nearby Union Territory of Mahe to enjoy some alcohol. I recommend the Oro Brandy from Karnataka. Last but not least is the city of Kalika, another historical port city along the North Malabar coast. The city traded with Arab merchants as early as the 7th century, earning it the nickname the City of Spices. Today, Kalika is Kerala's third largest city and boasts an impressive array of places to visit, including the Mishkal Mosque, a medieval mosque that's very unique because it doesn't have a dome or a minaret. For some quality shopping, head over to Kanayako Bazaar along SM Street, where you can buy a masala coated snack mix mm. and sweet and tasty halwas, souvenirs, jewelry, and even get a haircut and shave. The head massage I got here was incredible, practically orgasmic. At nearby <laughs> Kappa Beach, also known as Vasco da Gama Beach, you can see where the famous get you explorer off, man. first landed in India on May 17, 1498, making him the first European to discover the sea route between Europe and Asia. Further inland is a pillar-like monument that is dedicated to him and his arrival in India. Like Teleseri and its fellow southern Indian city of Hyderabad, Kalikat is famous for its biryani. At Kutuchira Biryani Center, you can get a taste of Kalikat Biryani, which contains tomatoes, chilies, garlic, onions, ginger, coriander, cashews, crispy onions, and short grain rice. You can get it with buffalo, fish, or chicken, and it's honestly one of the best biryanis I've ever had. For a different type of biryani, head over to Modern Restaurant, where you can try their macro biryani along with their masala coated squid with shallots and coconuts and their fried kingfish with curry leaves. If you'd rather have a quick snack, check out the Bombay Hotel, which offers a variety of snacks including bonda, bada, banana fry, surgeon, carrot cake, and even a special layered type of chai called dancing chai. You'll find even more snacks at the Ramath restaurant, including a mashed and stuffed plantain called unakaya, as well as savory dishes like the unreal mussel biryani and the mutton chaps. For street food, head out to Kalikat Beach after dark to try the refreshing green pea masala, and then head down the beach to the Shap family restaurant to try the unique cassava biryani and sardine curry. The cassava biryani is a rich and fatty mixture of cassava and beef ribs with no rice at all. Finish up with their unique take on faluda, which is unlike traditional faludas because it's served in a bowl instead of a cup, with fruit, almonds, vermicelli noodles, and wafers. It's topped with an upside down ice cream cone and is a sweet and wild way to end your time in Kerala. And if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and share this video with all your friends so they can come to God's own country. It's a must visit when you travel to India. Do you, do, you, do you think food is an important part of Indian culture? <laughs> <laughs>
It's you like know, it's like every single point he had, <laughs> which is not bad about it. It's just there was about fifteen dishes that he's this, like, and you need to try this and this. His his channel should be called David's been everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> you know the low level anxiety you get when a teacher is lecturing and you can't take notes fast enough and yeah. they just keep moving on and you're lost. That happened to me about ten minutes ago. It just became overwhelming uh. amounts of. I was drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. I got overwhelmed <laughs> with so, the ma- That's so much information. It was almost like an auction. And we got this good. Oh, 20 and we got all oh, 25 over there. We got 30 over there. We got 35 over there. We got 40. We got 45, 45, 50. <laughs> yeah. Woo! I, I think food. I think somewhere in there I heard cashew. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Noodle? I think uh I th- sunrise and uh orgasmic. Yeah, he did say that. He yeah. did say that. Yeah. Uh, Good I, grief. I think uh, food is an important part of Indian culture. <laughs> I think he just covered a master's level course in the history of Kerala in 21 minutes. Uh, it, all that food looked <laughs> Good at, grief. All that food looked absolutely delicious. Well, it looked delicious. everything. I the can't food, tell you what I saw. No. Except that there was a biryani. I do know that. He did say pani puri at one point. And then <sighs> something like puto or something like that. <laughs> So imagine, I imagine what that would be like if you went through Kerala and the whole time you were on speed. <laughs> that would be your memory. It's it says top ten. I mean, I guess Bull it's I, crap. Well, it does say places. So he he uh, he probably said ten places, top ten places, and a hundred things to eat and visit in each place. <laughs> it's true, man. He's been all. I don't over. know that he breathed. Yeah, he's probably been to more places in Kerala than a That's lot of what, yeah. people in Kerala. Yeah, it should be. You know, David's been everywhere. All at once. Wow, that was a lot of information. That was so... <laughs> you have to go back and watch sixty seconds of it to write down. A... How long did it take him to go to those places and do all of I that? He was probably there for a, m- at least month? a month at minimum. Probably more. He's probably they, one of those, he's probably a YouTuber that just travels yeah, for a living. It all looked incredible. So, but, he wow, like, he yeah, like I, I'm, he, I'm still suffering some low level anxiety from that. He like doesn't have a a, a time frame that he right. needs to be out. He he's can just, just go there, and which is great. Yeah, if I was single uh, and didn't have like a, a family, I would love to just travel, just travel and all the time. share that experience. Absolutely. Or if it was just me and my wife, but obviously when you have kids, yeah, it's a little more complicated. Just a little. Um, but man, I've wanted to go to Kerala for a long time, but there's the, all the food, the, obviously the beaches that we knew about already and the mountainous regions and yeah. the, that Airbnb thing on the water, the, the backwaters yep. and the one that's in the tea up in the mountains and yeah. Oh, it all inexhaustible. A lifetime India. And that's I'm just... convinced that India is the most beautiful place in the world. And it has the most diversity in terms of topography and regions. And that it is impossible. You could take 50 years of doing nothing but travel India and continue to discover new things about the place. Well, actually, um, United States is actually number one in terms of diverse topography, but we are very large. Yeah, we've got everything. And we've stolen a couple places. Just a few. <laughs> but we do. We have everything. We, I mean, we are very... We have every... We, you know what we don't have? What? That they do. We don't have jungle. That's true. The closest we're going to have is uh, Hawaii. Hawaii does have some jungle, but it not... It becomes uh, tropical there. Tropical jungle. That's it. Um, and then... You could have, you could, yeah, it, there's no, we do not have a jungle jungle. Right. Uh, obviously. Um, the closest, But we have everything else. I guess the closest, you could also, Costa Rica mm. technically has some jungle in it. Yeah. But once again, that's not technically a state. Right. It is a um, territory right. of the United States. Um, we've stolen Hawaii, which is why we have something beautiful like that. And we'd like to give back Texas and we could take Puerto Rico and keep it 50 states. Bye bye. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, but yeah, uh, India for, especially its size. Cause it's what a third of the United States. Yeah. Approximately about. Yeah. Uh, and this is just Kerala. <laughs> I this know video. it's extraordinary. Um, it really is extraordinary. Um, the, the the size of it and the fact that it has so much diversity in its and just, size and that and the history. For example, when we were watching that last Bengali film, 
when he gets to Calcutta and he's walking around, my sweetheart, she's like, it's Calcutta because she misses home so much. And as you're looking at that, you realize a lot of that is still there. Mm-hmm. And that was only 1957 because mm-hmm. Calcutta is older than America. Oh, yeah. Just that city is mm-hmm. older than America. Yep. You know, there's, the, the, there's so the depth of the history of the land is is unparalleled. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic video. Uh, a lot of information. Um, <laughs> it's all, it's just, that was a lot of information. Truly. It looks like a lot of delicious food, gorgeous places. Incredible. Places I would love to go. Yep. Let us know other videos we can react to down below. Just-